Um, I'm Mark Robbins. I'm, I'm an email developer, and I'm aware I'm in a room full of web developers talking about HTML email. So don't leave. Uh, follow me online, uh, m underscore j underscore Robbins, or at go rebel mail. So rebel mail is the company I work for, and we do interactive email, um, and that's the only thing we do. Uh, we don't do anything static, we just do interactive stuff. Um, so I'm going to explain a bit more about what that is in a bit. But first of all, seeing as I've got you all here, um, how many of you have coded an HTML email? Just a quick show of hands. Uh, that's probably most of you. And how many of you enjoyed that experience? Uh, I think, yeah, two? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'm not on my own. So most of these are the sort of things I hear from you. It's, uh, it's outdated. You're stuck to using inline styles and tables. You can't do it. You can't use JavaScript. You can't do anything interesting. It's very restrictive. Um, it's complicated as well. It's, um, there's lots of little quirks and inconsistencies and rendering issues between the email clients that make it very complicated and therefore very time consuming. If you're testing something in Gmail, it's like, right, get this to work in Gmail, work around all the little quirks of Gmail, then test it in Chrome, then in Firefox, Safari, IE, Opera, everywhere, and then test it in a Google Apps Gmail account, which will render it slightly differently. And then if the images are set to disabled by default, then even when you turn the images on, it's different to when the images load by default. The rendering is still slightly differently. And then you've got the apps, then you've got you know, <laughs> like your different phones, all different apps. It's huge, hugely time consuming. And also, you, I hear a lot that it's, it's spammy, and it is. I mean, it's more of a, a marketing strategy point of view, so I won't go into it too much. But the ROI of email is huge. It's you know, second to SEO. Um, and the conversion rate of email is, again, through the roof. So it works. But there's a lot more to it than that. Um, I don't know if you can see the image at the back there. It says, look, you can do with one can of spam. And then there's six sandwiches there. It's an old advert. They could have done something a bit more interesting, like a spam fritter or something. But yeah. Um, so anyway, there's a lot more that we can do in email. So something like web fonts, it's, um, you know, it's a simple way just to make it look a little bit better, and it, you know, it works. Um, SVG, it's almost like it's made for it. It's, uh, over 50% of emails are opened on a mobile device, and that's quite often in a sort of bit of a dodgy 3G connection, and you've got high-res retina screen. So you want a small file size with a, with a vector image. So SVG is perfect for email. Um, CSS Shapes, uh, it's a company called uh, uh, Style Campaign over in LA, and Anna over at Style Campaign has done a really good blog post about this. And so, sort of wrapping text around polygons and shapes with uh, the CSS shapes properties, and it just falls back to a, a straight column. It's there's all, all these things have fallbacks. When I'm, when I'm saying these things work in email, they work in some places. I'm going to talk more about support later, but all these things do work in places but have fallbacks. Um, Animation. Animation's great in email. I mean, it's, it's, I'm not just talking about like flashy GIFs, really annoying animated GIFs, click here, click here. Um, but sort of CSS animation, I, I, Zach talked about yesterday, about using animation to enhance the user experience. And because it's, it's not done that much in email, there's a huge opportunity there. Um, and device targeting, there's a couple of ways to go about this. Um, firstly, using CSS hacks. So similar to the way you may have in the past targeted IE with various uh, invalid CSS selectors um, that you know, this shouldn't work, it's invalid code, but the way that it's, it's uh, rendered in, in IE means it, it works. So the same can be done with email clients. Um, and there's, there's, there's loads of those that you can use to pick out individual clients. Um, and the other way is on, on, on the server side. So if you had an email, and in that email you, had a, you wanted a, an app download. So you had an image, which would be appdownload.jpg. When you open that email, a request is sent to the server. So you send the image, the server receives the request, and you can see this request has come from an iOS device. So I'm going to return this image for the App Store. And the same if it's Android device, you return the Play Store image. And then you can do the same with links, just redirects. 
So the redirecting through the server, when the link comes in, you choose where to redirect to the Play Store to download to the App Store download. And um, one of the other interesting use cases along these lines is there's a clothing brand, I forget who it is now, um, and they did it based on the weather. So they would see the request coming through, look at the IP address, look up the weather of that region, and if it was cold, they'd show you hats and scarves, and if it was warm, they would show you shorts and T-shirts. So I could open that email today and see it's quite nice weather, so see shorts and T-shirts, and then go home, go back to Brighton, where it's going to be cold. Open my email again, same email, same email client, but because there's a zero cache on the images, it's going to load up fresh and see a completely different experience. And finally, interaction. Interaction is um, my, uh, my area. That's, that's what I do. Um, I could talk about each one of these for hours, but uh, I'm just going to focus mainly on interaction today. So by interaction, I mean an interaction in an email. I'm talking about you take an action in the email with, with a mouse or with your finger, and you have a reaction in the same page. You don't uh, go off to a web page. It's not clicking a link. This is ac ac interacting in the email. So if you had a gallery with some thumbnails, you click on the thumbnail, it changes the image. Something as simple as that. This is done with a few ways. There's hover, focus, and active, are uh, all you call them like fleeting interactions. If you hover over something, then you can target it with the CSS for as long as you're hovering it. As soon as you stop, you lose that. You can fake it by using a CSS transition delay. So you can hover on something, and then when you ho hover off, uh, move off, then have a, a delay for like you know, three minutes if you want. Um, but then that's still a fixed time. You're now on a countdown until that's, that's gone. You can't remove that property. So checked is um, the best thing for using here. So checked is on radio buttons, uh, check boxes, um, and select menus. But select menus are not going to focus on here. Uh, they work a little bit differently. So you can see in the code I've got a couple of radio buttons. One of them's checked, a couple of divs, and a couple of labels. Then the CSS. So you see, if radio button one is checked, then it's a sibling, direct sibling of class one, make the background red and the same for class two. So here we can just simply just change the background color between the two classes. So I'll, I'll just look at a quick example um, of how we can just make that into something a bit more interesting. So this is a game concept um, I built uh, last year. So this is an email. This is opened in Apple Mail. Um, in this, we've got six radio buttons controlling it. We've got a little score counter down the bottom here. Um, the game gets progressively faster and progressively harder as we, as we go through it. And then there's a prize at the end. So I'll just show you um, quickly on here. So, oh yeah, I've got a little uh, custom cursor there. Um, so if I whack, whack a vol, thwack a vol, sorry, then you can see I'm scoring a point there. So essentially what we've got is two labels, one, one for the previous and one for the next radio button. So we don't have a previous and next value, unfortunately. So at the moment, I'll have radio button uh, two selected. So I've got a label for radio button one and ra radio button three. And then if I score the next point, then I'll, I'll be on radio button two, so I'll have uh, radio button three, so I'll have four and two. So as you, as you go through, I'll show you the uh, so scoring points like that. And this is on my, uh, my website as well, if you want to have a look. It's just emailcodegeek.com, um, and then you can play this yourself. Um, oops, hang on. So I'm just going to show you the end. I should have made this easier. <laughs> there we go. So there we go. So then you complete the game, and then you can go through to the, to the site. So from a, a use case point of view, you could do something like a discount. So every point you score, you get a discount. So 5%, 15%, 20% discount. Go and claim your prize. This is really bringing in this uh, engagement with the user and a sense of achievement. So you, you feel like you've earned your, your discount, your reward, and then you're more likely to click through and more likely to purchase. I um, haven't sent this out in a campaign yet. This is just a concept level. Um, but uh, I'm talking to a few brands at the moment that about using similar things. Um, it won't be thwack of all, we'll, we'll do something bespoke for them. Um, but that's just, yeah, that's one of the examples of something that's just a bit of fun, really. Um, 
what happens when we scale this up? So over here, we've got a whole load of radio buttons. There's quite a lot there. Uh, I haven't counted them. And on the, on the right-hand side, we've got a, a, an old punch card from a, an IBM punch card computer. And hopefully you can see sort of a slight similarity there. So the way a punch card works is you've got a piece of card, and then you've got a load of options of where you could potentially punch a hole in the card. So when you insert it into the machine, it will detect whether it's punched or not. So whether it's true or false, whether it's like one or zero, or in the case of radio buttons, checked or unchecked. So we're just pulling this right back to the foundations of computing with sort of, it's sort of binary almost, the way, the way we're doing it. It's, it's, it's true or false. Um, so if we were to string a load of these together, for example, so A1 checked is a sibling of B2, which is checked, which is a sibling of C9, which is not checked. So any other in the C array could be checked or none at all. D7 checked, E15 checked. And then all of that leads to a background of red. Oh, you could do something a lot more interesting than changing a background color if you really wanted to. Um, but then if I was just to change one of those, if I was to change D7 to D5 just by clicking on something, we will no longer have that red background. We'd have something else could trigger. Maybe it's green or, or whatever. So these, these, you start stringing these things together, and you can get some very complex functionality coming out. So this is example two. Um, this second example is a shopping cart. And let's get it up. So this one uses 117 radio buttons. That's a few more. So I should point out at this point as well, with email, there's certain limitations, such as you need to keep your whole file size under 100 kilobytes. So if you've got 117 radio buttons and, and you're coding everything with tables, Getting 100, under 100 kilobytes is quite a challenge. Um, we can push this a little bit further, but it's pretty much on that limit. Um, we've minified Uglify and just about get it under. Um, so I've also got four checkboxes going on here um, and a couple of uh, focus values that I'm using. Uh, we've got multi-page layout. Um, we can add and remove products from, the, from our cart. Uh, we're calculating prices and we've got form validation. So just to give you an example. Um, so you can see again, we've got the plus and, and minus on each one of the um, each one of the products. So again, that's the same concept of the previous and next radio button that we're clicking on. And so if I change that, you can see the price changing in line up there, but also down the subtotal of the tax and the discount are changing. And then if I just do the next one as well. So we're calculating prices on the fly, purely in CSS. <laughs> Thank you. It, it's not easy. <laughs> um, so this, this, is, uh, this is done um, with CSS counters. So the only thing I ever see, every, every post I've ever seen written about CSS counters is always about ordered lists and styling ordered lists. And yeah, they're, they're great for that. But that's, that's one, one role for such a, a, a great uh, attribute. So here, every time you click the, the radio button, when quantity one is, is checked, then the counter increment will go up on the line total, the subtotal, the tax, the discount, and the total price. That's increasing the counter increment on all of those. So then we can add up the prices at the bottom with the multiple products. So this is really scalable. Um, the initial version I had was just listing every possible combination. So that, yeah, just wasn't going to work. So the next cool thing with this email, um, let's have a look at this hoodie. It looks quite nice. It's black. It's medium. Uh, I'm going to change that. So I click through into a second page. So it's technically, it isn't the second page. Technically, this is, we've got uh, six pages, I think, in this email. So that's, if you imagine that as six divs, like uh, with the class page one, two, three, four, five, six, and then six radio buttons. So if 
page one is checked, then display the class of div one, page one. So uh, yeah, so we can do a fake a multi-page layout. I've called it multi-page, but it's so in this in this page, and each one of these pages is laid out the same. We've got a little description and um, little gallery here. Um, that little the little loading icon you see there is just us on the uh, the div behind the div containing the back the image. So when you're on a slow connection, you can see a loading icon. <laughs> um, also, let's just change the color here. So let's go for a red one. Um, I like the red. I'm going to change the size as well, go up to a large. I've been eating quite a lot this, uh, this week. OK, back to the cart. And you can see here, the image has changed here. The color has changed, and the size has changed back into the shopping cart or the home page or whatever you like to call that. So again, this is all coming from the radio buttons in the head, right up at the top. So because of it, it's all sequential, so the way the code works, as, as you well know. So the radio buttons, we put all at the top of the page, so we can control stuff below them, because we can only affect things that are siblings, which so it runs sequentially down in the code. So that's why we're using labels here, um, other, rather than actual radio buttons, because otherwise you just have to constantly be clicking at the top to control the, the content in, in the middle and the bottom. So here we've got everything as a label. So there's a label there, label there, that's a label, and yeah, for each line. And then if we go down, um, and then there's a couple more products here as well. So if we just click through, you've got, oops, sorry. <laughs> um, you've got a shirt there with just um, a few more options again with the image gallery. Um, and then a little counter up here as well. That's another uh, CSS counter, keeping track of how many products are in your cart. So form validation. Um, you can do HTML validation values in a, in a form. Unfortunately, that doesn't work quite yet. It's hopefully going to be rolling out a bit more soon. It's just HTML5 form validation. So we're faking this with CSS. So if I was to click, if I was to get over enthusiastic and not read the, the form properly and enter all the details, and just click buy now, get a couple of er error messages. So this is simply like looking to see if something in the array of shipping address is checked. And if it's not, then it shows the error, error message. So here I'll select, a, select an address, um, select a card. So this is stuff that you'd have on file. Um, so you, you, already, you know this. We've got your email address, so you know the brand. We've got your card and uh, shipping details on file already. And then just to confirm this, just so you know you are making a purchase, just to make p people completely aware that once you click on this, you make a purchase. And then you click Buy Now, and it'll process your order. This will submit the form. This is all contained in an HTML form. This will submit all the form data um, through to, the, to uh, the server. Which, and then that does a load of clever stuff I don't understand, because the guys who do our back end, uh, yeah, I just don't understand it. It's genius what they do. Um, it'll do validation and security and stuff, and end up and process the order, take the payment, and redirect you to a confirmation page. So you did a full purchase in a single email. So you don't need a website anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, well, you you do you do okay. You you need a uh, you need an email sign up form and you need a confirmation page. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'll talk a little bit about support and where this works. Uh, this is the first question most people ask is, uh, yeah, it's not going to work in Outlook, is it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, so to, to simplify this and keep track of uh, where this works and where it doesn't, we, we break down all the email clients into three groups. So that's static, limited, and interactive. So interactive, you can think of as everything you can do in a browser without the JavaScript. So if you, if you one of the great things, I, I use CodePen quite a lot for playing around with this stuff. And if you can do something in CodePen just using the top two windows, not using the JavaScript window, then you can do it in an, in an interactive email client. Um, limited email clients, something like uh, Gmail Webmail or Yahoo, 
they, um, they support the checked values and the sibling selectors, which is what we need to get this stuff working. Um, but they also edit other bits of code. They strip various things out. And, and then the static clients just, they, yeah, they don't work. Um, but they're still going to get what you've got currently. So what, what people are currently sending is text and images, just static text and images. And that's fine. And that's what, you set, what people are currently sending to all of these. But actually, 75% of these people could get some level of an interactive experience. Um, so these percentages here, this is taken from, um, from Litmus, from emailmarketshare.com. Um, so it's email tracking um, the software that Litmus use. Uh, so this is based on 1.01 billion emails sent last month. Um, and yeah, those are the percentages I've worked out from there. So I'll give you a bit more of an example of this. So here we have three image galleries. So over on the left, we've got the static gallery. Um, static gallery is pretty boring. Um, put a hover value on it, but that's probably not going to work everywhere. And it's, yeah, that's not very, it's not a great user experience. It's not exciting. You could put a hover here for another picture text on there if you wanted. But. Um, so the limited, this is something that you, you'd see in Gmail. Um, just a simple thumbnails changing the, the image. And the great thing what we found with our user testing so far, people know this. Like people, one of the greatest things we found is the users aren't impressed with what we're doing. They're not shocked by what we're doing because this stuff is appearing on the web everywhere. They're used to it. They, they just, they're not aware that you can't do this in an email. This doesn't work in email. You can't do any of this. So they just, it's just a natural user experience that they, they've already been trained to use these sort of things. Um, and then finally, we've got the interactive one here. So the interactive one is just, uh, I'm using a CSS animation just to change the background image, just to go through the carousel. Um, and then as soon as you interact with it, it will take control, give control to the user. So it's pausing the animation and now controlling the background image with the radio buttons. And again, we've got the before, the previous and, and next um, arrow on either side, so you can just click through. And when you get to the last image there, it'll just take you straight back around to the first one again. So that's simply saying on the last image, um, then using a label instead of the for the next one, it's for image one. So this is my final example. Example three is this. If you look up in the top left corner there, you can see that this is running in Apple Mail. Uh, I'll just show you that. Um, so this here, if I, look, if I do it like that, it looks a bit more like an email. So this whole presentation is done within an email. So if I just click here, so you can see all the radio buttons there. <laughs> So first off, we've got um, a little checkbox. And the checkbox is just controlling this, um, which is just showing the radio buttons. Um, and then next to that, we can jump back. So we've got the pages. So as you can see, if I select that, it's showing page one and page two and so on. So that's, and then the simple transition there is I've, I'm setting the scale to zero on all the slides. And then when the radio button is checked, set the scale to one, and then just put a transition between the two. Like minimal amount of code, really simple. And you can just scroll through like that. Um, the other thing as well, again, we've got, I've put a little hover value on here so you can see this a bit easier. We've got the uh, previous and next again I'm using here. So we've got the label on the right-hand side for the next and previous there. Uh, and then we've got here, we've got the, um, after that, we've got the image gallery. So that's the interact uh, limited gallery. It's controlled here, and the interactive gallery controlled up here. <laughs> or you could use those if you want. So yeah, again, I put a little hover value on these, uh, so you can see where the labels are. But uh, thank you very much.
I hope you enjoyed that. Any questions? Feel free to follow me on, uh, on Twitter and, and, real, and follow me in real life if you want. Oh, we've got one down here. Uh, hi. So hi. How long did it take to actually make this kind of shopping cart? And do you use any kind of generators or something? Or is it just by hand? <laughs> um, so the shopping cart, it's, I've, I've been with the company about six months. Um, and we, yeah, we've been building lots of sort of modules and stuff within that time. So, and there's a lot of research and development have been done. So it's taken it's taken a quite a few months to build that shopping cart email. Um, again, that's not in production just yet. At the moment, we have uh, in production we have basically the same functionality, but it will be add to cart. So you make all your selections, and then you go through to the cart where you'll then pay for it. Um, but yeah, that probably took. Um, yeah, maybe three months, sort of, if I put it all together to get that working. But now we've got it, we can we can reuse a lot of the the elements of that. Um, I, I build everything in handlebars, so I'm just pulling in certain like chunks of CSS and HTML that I know I'm going to use, um, and then it's just sort of yeah, and spits it out. And also with the with the branding, um, that's all done through handlebars as well. So just like insert, like just get a JSON file with the company logos, font sizes, colors. And then insert that, and it'll come through. Cool. Thank you. Really yeah. cool presentation. I also have a question about this shopping cart. Specifically, yeah. do you really plan to put actual prices in the email? I'm talking about a situation when someone reads this email two years from now, and uh, would this person be able to submit this shopping cart and have uh, his request processed? Uh, so, so do you mean if um, if they open it down the, further down the line, so if the the exactly. prices so have changed? The data can get out of date, the prices specifically. So I that, wonder, how do you plan to deal with that's this? That's true. Um, that is a concern. Um, but what we're doing with, with that, and also with stock levels as well, is another, another concern. Um, but we can use, on the interactive versions, we can use external style sheets. So we put zero cash on that. Every time you load the email, it changes. So every time you load the email, you get the most recent pricing and stock stock information. So it was just yeah, it, it's it's the same as I talked about earlier with the um, dynamic content, um, but d done with style sheets rather than just images. Uh, do you get any support from the email vendor, client vendors, or do you have a well, you know a week of stress after new release of Gmail client to check on your campaigns and so on? So so yeah, the the email clients don't do anything um, to help us. Um, when you get a new browser release, you get, brow you get notes about the release, you get information before it's happening, you get information after it's happened. You get with email clients, stuff just, just happens. Like the, the first thing I, I see a change is in a forum or on Twitter. So that, again, yeah, that's a, a real concern. But we can react to that quickly, because there's a good email community, email developer community, um, who really look out for these things and then share all the fixes. So as soon as we find a new issue with a, an email client, somebody will have a blog post up, up within a day of, with a fix. Um, and there are a lot of new issues that come through with re new releases. Hi. Uh, very nice presentation. Uh, I've, got, uh, I've done uh, some cool stuff with CSS only. But I've got a question to you about accessibility and uh, screen readers. What do you think uh, about about this? That's a, that's a very good point. Um, with the screen readers, the screen readers can't really deal with, with this sort of stuff, um, which is an issue. But with email, you, you send a, a text version as well. So you, you'd have a, a plain text version and an HTML version you send, and screen readers will just pull out the, um, the text version. Um, as far as other sort of you know other accessibility goes with sort of magnifiers and, and stuff like that, it, it's um, it's it's hard to work with because of the restrictions of the email clients. It's it's mainly down to the email clients where we can't get the accessibility in. But we there are yeah little things I I look into a little bit, but um, it's yeah it's tricky definitely. Hey, um, so obviously you guys have done a lot of research with um, browser 
um, different browsers and different clients. Are you planning to make any of that information public in a concise uh, website or anything like that? Yes, we are. Um, so I'm sure you're aware of the website Can I Use. Um, we are looking to build Can I Email. Um, uh, yes, you can. Um, and which will be sim similar sort of thing. So you can look up, you know, um, look up does the display work in Gmail? Well, if you use display block or display online, yes. If you use display none, Gmail strips it. So, and getting all that information into, uh, yeah, into a website. Um, and with them, we'll obviously op open source this and get, get people to con contribute to it. Um, that's a little way down the line um, at the moment, but we're hoping to get started on that soon. And then, but just the amount of time it's going to take to get all that data is going to be huge. But, uh, thank you. Hi. I'm totally impressed. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, um, the question is, do you have real statistics, uh, something like if users uh, really do that in emails? Or, I mean, is that huge work worth that? <laughs> I, I mean, it's 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 really profit than just putting some button like go to shop and <laughs> yeah um, yeah th th it's justifying the amount of time to put into it to 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 make it worth it. Um, we're still in in the our sort of beta phase at the moment, um, but from what we've seen is the m amount of engaged users. It has shot up. Um, it's yeah. Uh, I think between like sort of 20 and 60 percent increase on engaged users uh, th with the interactive emails. Um, but it's still a bit early to sort of start looking at sort of conversion and ROI, and, and we we haven't got a full tracking in place yet. We've got most of it there, but it's it's yeah. It's a bit early to look at it, but um, but now it's built. It's a lot quicker to sort of for us to run stuff out. So. Hopefully, we'll make the money back at some point. <laughs> cool. All right. Thank you. <laughs>